This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. For many years we've seen it on signposts on the, in the highway. We've, we've heard, read it in books, but Jesus saves. And what does he save us from? And our Christians so narrow-minded that we think that Jesus really is the only way to eternal life. Well, with me is Bill Harris. Bill, you've been a TV journalist, you've been a teacher, you've done a lot of things in your life, but you've, you've believed that Jesus Christ really saves. Amen. What does he save us from? He saves us from our sins. We, we, we seem not to understand sometimes that because of the sin of our forefathers, Adam and Eve, that sin was like a disease, so to speak. It just spread throughout the whole human race, meaning that now judgment and punishment await all of humanity, except for the fact that Jesus stepped in and took the punishment from us and for us. Why did it have to be Jesus? See, God in his own infinite wisdom could not send a choice angel. He could not send a regular human being. It had to be, it had to be a special sacrifice that met God's specifications or qualifications. Mm -hmm. And the only one who qualified was his own son. So he pulled his own son out of his bosom and sent him down. And he, he, he died first. Now, he, here's the point. While he was on that cross, Bob, Remember this, that when God looked down on him, he no longer saw his son. What he saw was the flesh of the prostitute, the flesh of the drug addict, the flesh of the alcoholic, the flesh of the schizophrenic, the flesh of the mentally retarded, the flesh of the white beater. He saw your flesh. He saw my so flesh. All the sickness, so all the disease, all, all the sin is that hanging on. Hanging on Jesus because all of that was imputed to him. And because God is offended by sin, God turned his back on his own son. I mean, God the Father and God the Holy Spirit stepped back and left Jesus to die alone. That's why Jesus said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The desertion was real because God is offended by sin. So he, he became the living sacrifice there on that cross, but it didn't end there. Upon his death, he went down into the grave and he suffered the full assault of hell. All that you and I yeah. would go through in hell, he went through it for those three See, that's days. That's one thing we, we very seldom talk about is, is we, we kind of end it with the, the cross and then begin it again with resurrection. Ah, but there was, there, was, not only, there was three days. In he that. not only died for you, he went to hell for you. Nobody under the side of my voice has to go to hell. If, anybody, if you go to hell, it's because you choose to. You don't have to because Jesus is the only one who qualified himself by the way he died, qualified himself to be the only way but there's that there's that good person living out there mm -hmm. they have been mm -hmm. good all their life yes. they've never they know offended anybody and if yeah. they did they asked but they've never imputed the, i mean they never received jesus christ yeah. as lord and savior now is god going to send them to hell or has he just provided this very narrow road that they can are they on their way there yeah that's an excellent question we get asked this all the time even though that person is, quote unquote, a good person, as mm -hmm. we're calling it, let's understand that person has the nature of sin. As I mentioned earlier, because of the sin of Adam and Eve, that, that sinful nature and death coming with it mm -hmm. le leads to the condemnation of that person. If they knowingly reject Jesus Christ and do not, and do not want the message that is telling them that even though you are a good person, you're still not good enough without Christ because of all that Christ went through for you. God will never negate what Christ went through to allow people to get to him. This is why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus is the gatekeeper. So there's not a lot of roads out there. I mean, if we're there a very a good person roads, and right? I worship the trees and I love the earth, I mean, it's yeah, it, it, there's not it, a lot of roads. And the reason, the reason God made it so narrow is not that God is narrow-minded, per se, in the negative sense that we think about. It is the fact that God doesn't want you to miss it. This is the only road of salvation. This is the only plan of salvation. Mm -hmm. Remember, God is a planner. He has a plan for your life, but he also has a plan of salvation. And this is the only plan that God set up. He did not set up multiple plans in multiple ways. Mm -hmm. He wants everybody to come through his son. And even in the final analysis, when we get to the end of this world, all things are going to be under Jesus Christ mm -hmm. because he qualified himself mm -hmm. by becoming human. He was God, the son in heaven. He took off his royal robe, Bob, and put on a robe of flesh. 
and went through the school of humanity for 33 years so that he could be touched with the feelings of your infirmities. Mm -hmm. Nobody else qualifies for that. Buddha doesn't qualify. Mm -hmm. Confucius doesn't qualify. Nobody else qualifies because they have not, and he died. And not only that, Jesus is the only God who predicted his own death and resurrection and pulled it off. <laughs> no other God has ever happened done just that. just like he said. Yes, happened just like he said. The Bible is also a history book, mm -hmm. right? Three so, 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 we, so we know Jesus is in there, and this is, he's a person, and he was crucified. So I, can I just believe, I, I believe that Jesus is there. Do I believe in him like I believe in this table? I mean, I see them both, yeah. I, I, but, but how do I really believe? What, what yeah, is the difference between this table's not going to save me? That's right. So what's the difference in those two beliefs? Well, it, 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 the key word is belief because we are asked to believe a God that we cannot see mm -hmm. because God is a God of faith and all that he does is based on faith. I mean, think about this world. When, when, when he brought this world into, into existence, it was by faith. He simply spoke it. And the world came into being. God is a God of faith. And when he was dealing with the disciples, remember Thomas was not there when yeah. Jesus came mm -hmm. back after the resurrection. Jesus made a special trip to come back with so Thomas. Thomas could see. Yeah, so he could see him say, you know, to, to touch the nail, nail prints in my hand and, my, and the, the, the wound in my side and the like. And, but he said, blessed are those who have not seen and still believe mm -hmm. because God operates on faith and he wants us right. to be the same way. When you sit down in this chair, you don't sit to look and say, well, is this chair going to hold me up? You just sit in it by faith. You just, hey, it's going to hold me up. God wants simplistic faith to be operated on our part. That sounds, that may sound like very far-fetched, but God is a God of faith. We are, we are to love him even though we haven't seen him. Okay, and there, there's somebody out there right now that's saying that, that sounds pretty far-fetched to me. Mm -hmm. they, they know about Jesus. They've heard about him along with Confucius and everybody else. And they're saying, okay. I, I'm hearing what you're saying, Bill. Uh, how, how, do I, how do I make this belief real in my life? How do I make that faith come alive in my life? Would you, would you speak to them and, sure. and, and, and show them what, they need, what sure. they need to do? I would say that for anybody that, that is out there, no matter what your situation, no matter what your background, no matter what color you are, what side of the tracks you were born on, it doesn't matter. All you need to do is acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior and that he died for you and that you want to accept him now as your Lord and Savior. And if you just repeat this simple prayer, it's, we call it the sinner's prayer in, in Christianity. You say, Lord, I am a sinner. Please forgive me for my sins. I acknowledge that you died and rose again for me. And now I accept you as my Lord and Savior, and I will live for you from this time forward. Amen. And you just became a born-again Christian. It's just that simple. When you confess and you really mean it in your heart, that's all it takes, Bob. That's all it takes. And they, and they, they move on with their life from there? or yeah. they? I would suggest, I recommend, as I used to do on my program all the time, that you get into a good Bible-believing church mm -hmm. so that you can be taught so that you can learn how to grow in this new Christian walk that you've just taken on. If you'd like more information about Jesus Christ or how to connect to a local church, go to our website or Facebook page. We have a lot more resources there that we can connect you with. Plus, I'd like to hear from you.